Hello, welcome to week two for IT entrepreneurship. Uh, today we're going to talk about understanding customers and market segmentation. If you remember from our introduction course overview, one of the key things to understanding uh, and creating your own business is understanding who your customer is and then segmenting and finding your niche in the market. So today we're going to talk about market segmentation. Uh, we're going to learn how market segmentation helps identify customers and narrow down target markets. Uh, we're going to be selecting, uh, how, uh, understanding how you can select one market as a beachhead market. We're going to talk about personas. These are uh, where you create and go in depth and create and understand a persona around your target customers. Uh, then we're going to talk about calculating your total addressable market uh, size. Uh, one of the key things towards getting financing and getting venture into your company and understanding the potential for revenue is understanding the total addressable market size. So uh, this course re uh, references highly uh, the book 24 Steps to a Successful Startup by Bill Ouellette. Uh And we're going to be talking uh, exactly, focusing on some of the first few steps, which is, uh, you know, who is your customer uh, and uh, selecting a beachhead market and building an end user profile. So some of those are the first two to three, uh, four steps around um, the uh, 24 steps to successful startup. By the end of the course, we'll have touched on almost all of the 24 steps uh, uh, through each of the lectures. And so today we're really uh, going near the beginning. So market segmentation. So the single and necessary sufficient condition of a business is of course to have a paying customer. Uh, we talked about that with commercialization. Uh, if you don't have a paying customer, uh, then there's no reason for your business uh, to uh, exist. And, uh, a business that uh, uh, doesn't make any money is a hobby rather than a business. So um, as a startup, you have a few resources. Uh, so um, uh, you have very few resources. So every step you take has to be hyper efficient. Uh, so you have to find that unmet need. Uh, you have to focus on a small market segment. By focusing on a small segment, you can, you can uh, um, make sure you're not wasting time and spreading your net too wide uh, to find that key customer of yours or that key segment. So uh, factors that affect market segmentation. Uh, number one is, uh, of course, a clear identification of the segment. So um, you have to identify what it is you're looking for. And we're going to get into that a bit more about what we mean by uh, identifying market segment and then measuring its effective size. So um, once we figure out how many customers we may be going in our segment, how much would each customer spend per year on our product times that would give us an idea of how much we could uh, have as a total addressable market and then uh, figure what our percentage would be. It's accessibility through promotional efforts. So can I, can I get to these, this target market through some kind of promotional activity uh, as well? And is it, uh, it, it, its appropriateness to the policies and resources of the company? So, um, if my target market turns out to be um, people who play polo, and I don't have any access uh, to uh, any country clubs or any way to get to it, uh, um, uh, or if it's uh, uh, a target audience of people who um, um, uh, scientists that uh, uh, I don't have any interaction with, is there a chance? Uh, is this is make sense for me? So it's something that you have to understand, is it appropriate for what you're looking for? So how do you perform market segmentation? Um, so you brainstorm uh, a wide array of potential customers and markets for your business. So you start wide thinking about who uh, potentially could take uh, benefits for your business. And then you narrow down to your top six to 12 markets. And out of those, you gather some primary research on your 6 to 12 markets and figure out which ones make sense for you. So market segmentation, so you brainstorm the array of, uh, of activities. Number two, you're narrowing. So as you narrow, you're, you're using more criteria to, to break down your list of potential markets. Uh, you know, which of these potential markets do you have a good ability to deliver the service to? Um, if you're like me and I provide um, some, um, I call it VCIO, but some virtual uh, um, uh, 
consulting to, it's people I definitely need to meet with and go see. So that pretty much cuts down the geographic area uh, of it. And of course, competition. Um, how many people are already providing that service? Is there a way to, is it a saturated market? Um, is there a place that uh, doesn't make sense for you to go? Um, and your ability to addish, uh, leverage additional segments. So uh, can you, uh, by focusing on one segment, uh, can you leverage your success from another segment? So if you are uh, coming out with a wearable a medical device uh, and your target audience is physiotherapists, but you believe that uh, nurses might be uh, uh, um, able to benefit from this, can you leverage your success with physiotherapists to address the market with nurses and, do and doctors? So those are things, some things to think about. And then consistency with your team's values and goals. So um, if a potential target market is the military for your wearable medical device, but uh, this is, is this a, a market that you really want to uh, go, or that your team is happy to be selling to or not? Um, you know, those are the kind of things you have to understand and, and, and uh, focus your efforts upon. Um, market segmentation as well then, uh, your next step is uh, primary market research. So um, you're, there's a number of caveats to this that um, you won't have the answer to all these questions and your potential customers may not, do not have the answer either. This is all about just going out and asking questions to your pri uh, about to, to hopefully one-on-one -on -one with people who are in your primary uh, target or at least doing some research around it and understanding what their challenges are and, and how they, they operate day to day. Uh, as well just to try to gather that information in to help you even more focus and segment. Uh, so uh, market segments, here's a matrix example uh, from the, the text uh, from Disciplined Entrepreneurship um, and this is a uh, industry which is uh, uh, the application, the end user by an environmental, industrial design, uh, medical visualization, surgical simulation, microsurgery, geographical visualization as well and then the potential players as well. So all the key data points that you can pull out of this, uh, the market segments uh, just by going through um, um, each one of these uh, and, and seeing where they cross and where they match. Uh, let's talk about what, uh, what a beachhead market is so, um, and how to choose it. So a beachhead market uh, is just one market opportunity from that matrix that you want to pursue as having a beachhead on your market. So it's the, you, you narrow that criteria to select a small market. So this is my first market I'm gonna go after out of all the addressable markets that uh, I've seen. Uh, and I'm gonna use it to establish uh, some success and get myself going. The characteristics of your uh, beachhead market is that all the consumers in this beachhead market have similar, uh, buy similar products. Uh, so they all have a similar sales cycle and expect products to provide value in similar ways. So uh, you can easily, as if you have salespeople or if you're selling yourself, salespeople can easily shift from selling from one customer to selling to a different customer uh, with, uh, with uh, no problems whatsoever. And there's word of mouth. So if you can find a community of people that, uh, are in, uh, that, that talk to each other, once again, um, uh, if it's a, you know, if you're providing a web service uh, for travel agents, and you find that uh, you've got a way of addressing all the travel agents and getting to them, uh, either through a trade show or something like that, then um, that's the way that uh, you can easily establish your beachhead for it. And then, of course, understanding customers. Uh, we're talking about personas, so you make an end user profile. These are, you use your primary market research to flush out a detailed description of the typical end user within your market. So this is an individual real person who will use your product. So you, you find out all about this person and um, uh, the target demographics, so the characteristics of your end user profile. So you stay focused on uh, homogeneous end users who will provide initial cash flow and exclude all the others. So how do you create this uh, persona? Here's an example of this fellow, Silvio. So he's an alternative channels manager with a small bank. Uh, he earns uh, 2,500 euros per month. Uh, and so here's his story. He's energetic and, and ambitious as his family. Here's his goals. 
Uh, here's his needs to get quick and measurable results uh, and lower his costs and his pains. Our large IT projects, etc., etc., so that you've gone and talked to him about what he does, what his goals are, what his needs are, his plans, so you can focus and, and get a, uh, a marketing uh, plan uh, and target his, uh, um, uh, target his segment and his peer group. Uh, here's another grid uh, out of the um, uh, 24 steps as well too. This one is a facilities manager um, at a data center. So um, once again, you've got his environment that he works in, um, talking about his, uh, um, what his uh, um, hardware environment is. Here's his personal information, uh, how old he is. Uh, it's important to, to have these demographics. So once again, if you're uh, understanding how you're going to relate uh, to the customer and how you're not uh, is key. Uh, then his career content, he's mid-career, about 18 years old, um, uh, oh, sorry, 18 years at IBM. Uh, and um, his informational uh, information sources as well. Uh, important to know that, and then um, his purchasing criteria. So you can see the amount of data that we've built up around um, the, this person. And the last example, I'm not going to go through this piece by piece, but this is another person, Ed Champ, uh, who's the sculpting manager at uh, Boys Toys R and D, uh, and all the details we have around this. So this is the kind of detail you go into when you're creating these personas for your customers. Uh, now let's talk about uh, uh, understanding the size, the total addressable market size um, of your product or service. So to, to get your total addressable market size, you take the annual revenue per year your business would earn if it have achieved 100% market share of the market. So this is only used for your first beachhead market when you're figuring out where, what the percent, what the whole value is out there. So uh, the graphic I've used here is this is showing online sales of new auto parts and accessories. So if your idea was something to do with online sales of automotive parts, uh, whether it's you know selling a uh, um, glass tint or, or, or winter tires or whatever, this is where you could start and say, my total addressable market is this. Then you start to do a bottom-up analysis. Let's say it is that you are selling um, um, rims for specialty cars. Uh, then you have to figure out who's the total number of people who are buying specialty rims overall and be interested in this kind of uh, product. Uh, so you start uh, counting the number of people that you could get. And then you start talking about how much they would spend. So then you do a top-down analysis and figure out um, um, how many uh, users meet the different characteristics uh, of, of who would be interested in the product that you're selling and would be in the geographic area that you'd be selling to uh, and have the kind of disposable income that you're looking for, all those things, and work it down. And that way you can get an idea of what your market and what you'd be looking for for revenue. So I've covered a lot of things today, um, and, and, uh, but now at the end, by, by going through these slides, um, you should be able to define and explain the importance of segmenting the market. And uh, remember, one of the important things is, of course, you have limited resources, you want to focus them in the right way, uh, and you want to make sure you're providing the right service to the right customer. Show how market segment helps us identify potential customers and narrow down target markets. So I think we can talk, you can understand how market segmentation does that and narrows it down for us. You might understand now what a beachhead market is after you've figured out all the markets that are available for your product or service. Uh, once you establish that beachhead, uh, which is that first key area of success and why you would pick it, because maybe it would relate to other uh, areas pretty quickly. Uh, and then personas, to create these personas of your customers, to understand them in depth so that you can understand how you can fulfill their needs and, their, uh, and uh, address their, their requirements. And then how to calculate this total addressable market size. It's a number that gets thrown around a lot, uh, but it uh, makes sense and certainly something that would cut customers, sorry, investors uh, and uh, bankers and people who would be interested in helping work with your company and of course you. Uh, we'd be interested in knowing that, then figuring your total addressable market and then figuring out what percent of that you can grab in the first uh, one or two years of your business is very key. Thanks for your time. 
Uh, looking forward to meeting you face-to-face -face next week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.